seeing all these fucking jets, Scott, gets me pumped in my fucking testosterone pumping. Because in the moment, I'm like, oh, man, you never really see just wholesome couples like this. You can tell they're really in love. They got the kit. And I was like, oh, right, the death scene's coming up. I'm like tossing and turning. I'm like, ah, don't ah, forget to mention <laughs> the death scene. And not everyone's going to like what you like, Scott. This podcast is over. The Mind Reels, folks, with Vincent Cloud and Scott Allwood. He did the thumb thing. I did the thumb thing. The uh, Rob Van Dam wrestling, right? What the hell are you doing? <laughs> That's what the guy. <laughs> we're talking about Top Gun, the first episode, and then the first thing you do is like, Rob Van Dam. Like, you're not. No introduction, just our names, and then you go off <laughs> weird thing. Oh my! Because you just said the thumb thing, and I'm like, well, I actually got that from Rob we're already off the rail. And damn, oh Jesus Christ! All right, we're already off. Well, the this is the mind reels. Oh, <laughs> terrible! What are we doing oh, today? God. Yeah, um, we're talking about the 1986 Six. classic, apparently. Yeah. Top Gun. With my boy Tommy Cruz. Huge fan. Tommy Cruz. Yeah, I love this audio, by the way. Um, <laughs> you, uh, love Tommy Cruz as well. Are you a big Tommy Cruz fan? Uh, I, I, I'm really not. I'm more of a Val Kilmer fan. So when you mentioned this movie, I was like, okay, well, I know that they're opposites. You know, they don't like each other in the movie and in real life. And I've always sided with Val Kilmer. Yeah. So I was like, let's fucking watch this movie. But fucking uh, Valley Kill, he's barely in the movie, I want to say. You know, Valley he's. Kill. Valley Kill is <laughs> barely in the movie. And I'm so sorry that I brought this movie up and then you're expecting to see your boy. And he's just every once in a while like, fuck you, Tommy. Do, 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 do. <laughs> yeah. But. Um, but we get a lot of Tom Cruise. We get a lot of your guy, man. And this is yeah. this might be his most Tom Cruisean performance because he's just like, I'm just gonna rely on smile, man. Just super cocky, man. You know, I am dangerous. You know, You're like what the fuck is this? But this is before Tom Cruise had his signature run. He doesn't run once in this fucking movie. He flies, Scott. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Uh, I'm a huge Tommy Cruise fan. Do you just want to talk about if we enjoyed the film or not? Because I was not looking forward to this movie at all. Not a huge aviation fan. Boring. Mm. Even though you recommended this movie. And I was like, I just assumed it's, well, you said, I love Tom Cruise. Let's watch this movie. And I thought that you already watched the movie. And I was like, well, at least we'll have one guy who watched it, one guy who didn't. So we'll kind of meet in the middle. Wait, did you but never, you'd never seen it either. No. Oh. No, Even I for this review, that. never watched it. <laughs> uh, I am a huge Tommy Cruise fan. I could have swore I was like, I love Tommy Cruise. Here are some movies that I would love to talk about. And you were like, no, 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 no. And I said Top Gun. And you're like, well, I guess they got a sequel coming out. That'll be fine. So really, All right. Top Gun on me. I didn't want to watch the movie <laughs> because it did not appeal to me. I had still not seen it, even though I was a huge Tommy and still huge Tommy Cruise fan. Hmm, hmm. All right. Well, and that movie, though, man, that's getting pushed back, right? Because of uh, good old 19, COVID-19, right? That is correct. But let's but let's 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 forget about 2020, Scott. Let's go back to 1986, where this was, um, you know, this was when America was like, man, we're fucking super patriotic. And if you're not that way, get the fuck out. Well, I guess they were just starting to be that way in the 80s. And this was, I would say, a huge propaganda picture to get people to fucking sign up for what I assumed was the Air Force, but it's the Navy? Is that what it is? Yeah, I never actually even knew that was a thing until after I watched the movie. I was like, let me look up some information. And they were like, they wouldn't let this person crash and die in the movie because they wanted people to sign up. And then signing up for the Navy went up like 500%, I guess. And then I'm like, this movie was supposed to just be for art. And now you're making it for what? I was really upset to see that. I don't 
that was weird. I didn't even know that was a thing. That was a thing people were doing. Like, oh, let's make this movie and try to get. It. I went, oh, with that info. Yeah. yeah um, one of my favorite parts. There was an interview. I, I did some. I did some research, like post research sort of stuff. Like, how did people think about it and stuff? And I remember Michael Ironside, who's in this movie. He's great. Um, he's like, I was at a bar and these two fucking. Uh, military, uh, you know, Navy, Air Force people walked up and they kind of were both on either side of me and they were just kind of like staring them down. And he's like, well, what's going on, fellas? And they're like, hey, uh, you in that Top Gun movie? And he's like, yeah. And they're like, we fucking signed up for you. <laughs> like, we, you know, that movie made us sign up, you piece of shit. Like, they're all grizzled veterans and shit, like missing an arm or something like that. They're like, you piece of shit. So, yeah. There were some long-term effects from this fucking movie. And when I watched it, it was like almost too much 80s. You know what I mean? It was it, it was like diabetic from all this 80s. You know what I mean? It was crazy. Very, yeah, in a lot of ways, I can understand. It was very cliche 80s type stuff. Anything that you would think the 80s would be, you watch this movie, and that's that's your meal ticket to the <laughs> 80s. Yeah, um, uh, Facebook's um, Jessica Gibson Haskins said, total classic 80s movie. And it completely is. <laughs> Vince put on his Facebook, what are your thoughts on Top Gun? He, he gave you no idea what the hell an introduction to what he was about to read there, but that's what that was. <laughs> and I also put on Facebook, hey, what yeah. are your thoughts on Top Gun? Immediately just gifts like from top gun so i assume they thought it was a thumbs up one person put they never saw it uh one of my friends actually had named their child maverick so i i assume they enjoy the movie quite a bit i have a nephew named maverick although name. i've never asked my sister if it's because of top gun because i never gave a crap about top gun so i never <laughs> even assumed never it was from top crap gun. about your nephew <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 Maverick, I, I swear. Uh. One of my people on here put, it's the exact same movie as Days of Thunder. Prove me wrong. Have you oh, seen Days shit. of Thunder, the race car movie? Um, not only did I watch it, Scott, I remember when Hardy's gave away little NASCAR cars to celebrate the fact that there was a movie called Days of Th Thunder out. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah, and I believe that was when Tom Cruise was with his uh, Nicole Kidman lady, right? The kid. And then another person put, only way to watch it is naked and oiled up to get the real experience. Yes. I will test that later and get back to you, Vince. <laughs> you want to go ahead and start yeah. talking about the movie? Since we got some other... No. Did you ever tell me if you liked this movie or not? Did you? Oh, well, okay, that's the whole thing. When I started, I didn't want to watch the movie, and I kept on putting it off, and then when I f saw it on Hulu, I was like, okay, fuck, and I pressed play. <laughs> it was that drawn out. <laughs> and when it started to play, I was like, well, it looks like typical Jerry Bruckheimer fare, because it's, you know, that, that fucking opening is really nice. It looks really like, it's like, again, making the military to an you know, to be sexy and shit, you know? It was beautiful. And, yeah, but I was like, I've seen all these scenes already. I already know the movie through uh, osmosis because a lot of it's been parodied. There's been a lot of GIFs. There was hot shots, you know what I mean? So I already knew Go shot. Goose was going to die. Yeah, you know? Like, I just you just already know that sort of shit. So when watching it, it was like, it was like, it was like, just like going through gifts. You know what I mean? You're like, okay, this is that scene where they sing to the lady. This is the scene where Tom Cruise sexually harasses the woman in the bathroom. You know what I mean? Like you just kind of knew all these parts. <laughs> so overall, I thought it was, I thought it was harmless. Let it be in the 80s, but it's, yeah. If you had to give it a number of one out of 10. 69. Oh, <laughs> one out of 10? 
Yeah, man. So that opening credits thing. Well, let's just get into the fucking movie, okay? And then we'll okay. go on from there. All right, then. It's bad. <laughs> That's so aggressive. Well, you know, um, all seeing all these fucking jets, Scott, gets me pumped in my fucking testosterone pumping, especially with the song uh danger zone by uh go good old uh k logs right i don't know what their name is but sounds about right kenny loggins i, I thought we would be safe making these little <laughs> names for <laughs> i had no idea you were saying kenny loggins i was just like oh there was a band named k logs hmm. okay. <laughs> it was actually um he turned his life around he started off as a porn actor <laughs> they're like kenny loggins you should make music instead <laughs> right. then here we are the danger zone was his dick oh yeah <laughs> wow yeah now <laughs> this song uh, how do you feel about the song scott let's get into that the, the opening sequence beautiful song amazing I was already in the, I was in it. I was like, yeah, I don't care about aviation, but I'm ready to see these motherfuckers fly. Yeah. <laughs> Although before we watched it, you were just like, I don't want to watch it because boring ass flying scenes. And I got to admit a lot of it was boring for me. I think it's just because it couldn't be filmed in a way where I understood what was happening. You know what I mean? Like it was just kind of like, Cut to this guy, cut to this. Cut, you know, like, so I didn't really know what was going on. Yeah, yeah that was a problem with me as well. Uh, I will say that I am a huge fan of Tony Scott, the director. He had made Man on Fire and Domino right as I was graduating or towards the end of my high school uh, career. And I just really enjoyed those movies. So uh, knowing that he directed this, I was like kind of pumped to see it. And then when it was showing those, he uses kind of this... Uh, the way he was filming the sunsets, I don't know what the hell was going on back there. Just the way the sky looked, I guess is what I'm trying to say, is very similar to what it would look like in Man on Fire and Domino. So I really appreciated the tones that were being brought out. Yes, but I also thought this is a typical uh, uh, Bruckheimer production. Jerry Bruckheimer did this, and he does the same thing with uh, The Rock, um, you know, uh, Armageddon. You know what I mean? Like we've all seen his fucking movies, and it's always the same. It's like you know, check out this sexy ass uh, tank or this army person and the gun. Like see the sun shimmer off this guy, and then the cool sunset. So I wonder if just the both these guys were like, we're just going to keep on doing this movie with this look you know what i mean it sounds like it sounds like they yeah did. but if so right away in this movie they're flying and like you said i have no idea what the hell is going on but they're flying it seems like they're having a good old time and then suddenly there's someone there like it was it supposed to be someone that was bad but they weren't supposed to shoot them i'm i'm immediately zoning out at this point because i'm like <laughs> <laughs> okay, it's been a few minutes of flying. Let's just get to something I can understand because these people are just up here flying and then suddenly Tom Cruise is like upside down, flipping the dude off. And it was just very confusing. Was like, is this danger or is this not? It sounds like there's a zone of danger, but I'm not understanding <laughs> what the danger is here if he's just casually flipping this dude off. Yeah, exactly. And then because it's like, well, why wouldn't you just kill that enemy? you're taking a Polaroid of him. Like, what is this? And then the guy, one of the other guys, uh, his name is Cougar. Yeah. Cougs. Uh, <laughs> uh, he, he gets struck with the, the sky madness, Scott. He just, for some reason, he, he can't think and he's sweating and shit. And it's, it's really bizarre. He doesn't want to land and get out of the danger zone. He wants to stay there. Well, so kinda, that's when Tom, he's just like, yeah, my, kid, my wife. Nah. And then all of a sudden they're low on gas. Like how long were they up there cruising with this bad guy? And in their time for us, it's a few cruising. minutes. It's like they were for hours up there. Just, yeah, we're low on gas, but I'm going to 
stay up here? Well, immediately I was like, ejection seats. Like the guy, because it's just not Cougar up there. He's there with someone else, perhaps a guy named Town, who knows. Town could have been like, well, Cougar clearly lost it. I'm going to pull the button. I'm going to pull the cord. We'll both shoot out and we'll be fine. But that's not an option. But instead he took the chances of, you know, we're just going to land on this ship, the tarmac. Is that what it's called? The tarmac? Not on a ship. What is the tar? What is a tarmac? But I'm not sure. A tarmac is is for. I think it's strictly for airports, but I might be totally wrong, dude. Uh, again, uh, I have no idea. Um, did you ever want to sign up? Would did, would this movie get you to sign up, Scott? I am leaving in three weeks. <laughs> no, I, never. In they a won't take years. you, American Sniper. You're too old. Never in a million years would this. I mean, if I was a stupid kid in 86, maybe. Wow. All the veterans are like, fuck. I mean, thank you for your service. (laughs) Thank you for making it where I didn't have to. (laughs) Oh, that's great. Um, Well, well, I remember, right. uh, I remember just real quickly. um, I think my mom wanted me to be like, well, if, you know, join the Air Force, you would like it, you know, because growing up as a kid, I wanted to fly. So it made perfect sense. <laughs> and, I'm, and when I say I wanted to fly, I literally wanted to be able to f- take flight. I remember writing Santa Claus numerous times on numerous Christmases where I'm like, just let me fly. You know what I mean? <laughs> For a second, I thought you said writing Santa Claus, not writing Santa Claus and I was very I wrote him and while I was writing him I was like <laughs> make me fly <laughs> Sandy <laughs> that is so I was on his back that's so adorable that's yours I was on his right? back like, I want wings damn it no not wings I want to fly like Peter Pan Man. style yeah well but no capes no capes <laughs> uh okay so so what nothing <laughs> you, know what I I noticed, to, you know what i noticed uh, in this movie is that in the first 15 minutes they played danger zone the entire 15 minutes <laughs> like why oh yeah jesus just been here this long and you know what i never did get tired of it though to be honest still just like it's a it's a catchy song you know this soundtrack would be like one of the most successful of all time really and it like even one of the songs that take my breath away by Berlin that won the the Academy Award that year so oh. yeah it was a hardcore hard, hardcore soundtrack and what I also found interesting was those particular songs that enter the danger zone and uh take my breath away those were already written for the movie by the people that were making it they were just like we just have to hire some fucking a-listers to sing these particular songs so they already had these things figured out. They were like, we're going to make a hit with this motherfucker. You know what I mean? And they Crazy. Succeeded. Oh, yeah, for sure. Oh, wow. um, let's, let's get back to the movie where, okay, so Tom Cruise, instead of just landing on the tarmac, let's just call it that, he's like, no, I'm going to go back and talk Cougar into landing. You know, I thought that was really stupid. I was like, what is he doing? And then he went up there and he talked him down. He, and I was like, he could do that by landing and then talking to him through the heads. But he was like telling him, I'm right next to you. You got this. You're good. Like, I'm going to help you get in. And then what's really funny is in the original script, I guess Cougar was supposed to land, crash and die, which would then make Tom Cruise be able to go to this school. But, cause, but can you imagine right. that if he was like, no, man, you got this and you're dead. What the <laughs> fuck? scarring is that for tom cruise immediately but that's um uh, he did go up there and he he helped him land and i i thought it made a little more sense when he got next to him he was trying to tell like show him that he was there next to him that he had nothing to worry about Um, but still the overall idea that is very silly they well no what they should have done was what they did to the fucking villain fly upside down and be like, hey, man, we're being silly. Let's just go land back on the tarmac. Relax. This is fine. That's what should have happened. You know what I mean? Instead, they do it to the to the, the opposition. It's so fucking bizarre. I really didn't know what to think when that happened. And when I saw, the, you know, those two, the upside down thing, I was like, 
is this Hot Shots? Like, did I put in Hot Shots? What the fuck? And I remember um, the uh, the technical advisor, he was like, you know, because he was part of the Air Force or whatever. He was like, that's not possible. Don't put that in. You are, it, that is so silly. But they were like, we're, we're doing it. We're putting it in, you know? So there you go. Well, they tried to explain and, it off in, in that little scene later on because I thought it was, didn't he, isn't that where Val, Val Kilmer says bullshit? Yeah, yeah. The most you can. <laughs> very, very much cooler than the way I just did it, but I can't do anything cool, so I just had to do it the silly way. I'll call you Tepid Water Man with that performance. How about that? Room temperature man. Okay. Uh, so he talks Cougar down, and, and now Cougar talks to uh, Principal Strickland. You a fan of Back to the Future, Scott? Um, I'm fine with it. I'm, I, I've seen it. Okay. I'm just saying that's the guy from Back to the Future, Strickland. Yeah. That's it. My, uh, and he's like, uh, what happened up there or something like that? Or, or you're fine. But then Cougar's like, no, man, fucking these are my wings. Take these broken wings. <laughs> I don't remember the rest of the fucking lyrics. I was going to go on, but I don't remember. <laughs> yeah. And so because he did that, Tom Cruise and Goose get to go to Top Gun. Wow. Which is weird. I think we're uh, saddled up for a wild ride right here, huh? <laughs> this is a great... Yeah. I don't get. Oh, first of all, I didn't know this was just a train, a, a movie about training to be in combat. They're leaving actual like danger zones to go practice to see who's better at flying. I had no idea that was the case. That was so bizarre to me. I <laughs> did not either. So immediately, I'm like, "Where is the conflict <laughs> in this movie? In this story? What's?" Well, we're just going to see him practice flying this entire time? Where's the drama? But, oh, boy, Vince, we didn't know what was coming our way emotionally because we were attached to a character that ends up saying R.I.P. to the S.E.A. See? <laughs> Whoa. <I don't> know. <laughs> yeah, man, it's, it's going to get real deep real soon, man. Well, no, no, probably a good 45 minutes into the movie. I think that happens, something like that, right? Um, what's next? Uh, we meet Michael Ironside. He's at the Top Gun place, um, and he's like, hey, you guys, you, the best of the best here, but who's the better of the best? Who's going to win? What you I know? Was, it's just like staring him down. What I thought was a funny line was uh, the instructor was like, we're all on the same team, but this school is about combat. No points for second place. Put that in my notes. Because so I was like, the fuck does that mean? We're on the same team, but don't come in second place, you losers. You got to get first. Yeah. Let's work um, together. But don't. <laughs> One big contradiction. Fucking move. Yeah. It, it, yeah. And, and, okay, so, again, you said, where's the, con you know, where's the conflict and stuff? Where's the danger? So now it's, like, about competition. And who's the other side of that? That is Iceman. That is Val Kilmer. But even that isn't even too dramatic. They don't really have this ultimate, you know, head-to-head -head at all. Never. Never. Want, yeah, in the <laughs> never happens. They're just kind of... Every once in a while. Oh, you got me this time, you thou dickmer. <laughs> yeah, it's so, it's so weird. So when I'm watching this, I'm like, okay, so it has to be about between Cruz and Kilmer. And by the way, did I mention that they hated each other in real life? Like for real and for decades on afterwards. They were just I, like, I would fuck. I like to him. know that story because I had yeah. never heard about that. Yeah. What's that's, the story behind that? They just... Val Kilmer thought Tommy Cruise was a piece of shit and vice versa. Yeah. And uh, well, yeah. And I think Kilmer didn't even want to make the movie, but he was uh, like under his contract. They're like, listen, you have at least one more movie with us and we've decided you're going to make this movie. And Val Kilmer's like, I'm a pacifist. No, he didn't say that, but he was definitely just like, I don't want to do it. And 
you know, he's notorious for being difficult anyways. So to put him in a movie where he doesn't want to be as it is, you know, but I'm assuming he just put all that performance into like, fuck you, Tom Cruise. You know what I mean? And it was a very easy thing because what's his main argument? It's that Cruise is dangerous. Yeah, this whole time. Which he is. Yeah, I'm on Val Kilmer's side because (laughs) everything he says to Tommy Cruise is 100% fact every time tom cruise does something it's it's not what he's supposed to be doing it is putting other people's uh, lives in danger val kilmer's just sitting there like i'm just trying to get number one dude give me that medal you're over here trying to get people killed and if we could skip overall fucking iceman wins the trophy and fucking maverick is like, I don't have what it takes. And he just wants, to, he's like, those who can't do, teach. So he goes to be a Top Gun instructor. Just overall, things don't really, like, it's, ex- I think it's exciting. Very yeah, exactly. It's so, it's so weird. It is, it, it is the most unusual movie I think I've ever seen that had such a big impact on, like, pop culture and shit. You know, like, it's not the movie I assumed it was going to be. It's so weird. Yeah, there are so many reasons as to why it should never have been as big as it is. A lot of ways it doesn't make sense. Yeah. Let's get into um, the, other re- the other big part of this story for the ladies. Um, I don't know why I went like this for the ladies. Uh, <laughs> oh, calm down, Vince. <laughs> are you talking about Charlotte Blackwood? Who's that? Charlotte Blackwood, the character. I guess. Charlie? Charlie, yeah. Yeah, Charlotte. I would have remembered Charlotte. Uh, that's what they call her at first, Vince. She introduced oh. herself as Charlotte Blackwood, and I thought, what a cool name. And then the rest of the movie, they called her Charlie. <laughs> I guess that's yeah. no Charlotte Blackwood. I know. They should have called her shoulder pads, to be honest with you. Oh, my gosh. Like it was. I understand it was a different time and stuff like that, but I couldn't get over the... You know, just to, just allow me to be shallow for a second, but I can get over the puffy hair, puffy 80s hair, and the big shoulder pads. You know what I mean? It was so weird. That's I was like, that's oh, strange, Vince, because you weren't saying anything about the males and their attire and their hair. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah, but, okay, I happen to like spiky gelled hair because I did it to myself years ago. I never puffed my hair out. It's long enough to be puffed, but I've never puffed it out. And I've never had to wear goddamn shoulder pads. I'm not Richard Nixon, motherfucker. These are legit shoulders. All right. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Whoa, calm down, Vince. <laughs> I've never <laughs> seen just... it like this, folks. These <laughs> <are> wild. <laughs> All right. What do you think about this, uh, the whole um, wingman picking up singing tour scenario? I what was that? It. I hate it every <laughs> second. Because all I can do is sit there and go, how awkward is this for the person you're singing to? Or like, she's so like out of everybody around, everyone's pinpointing singing towards her. If I was in that situation, I'd be like, (laughs) after it was done, immediately hightail it out of there because that is embarrassing. It was why she enjoyed this. I'll never, she's a psycho. She's a, she was, she's the psycho. She was forced. <laughs> That's true. She, she was forced to be just with all the pressure on her. She was like, ah, sit down. And they're all like, ah, oh, yeah. They're all deleted. <laughs> Fuck her, man. <laughs> Fuck her, it man. Ridic- <laughs> it was just ridiculous. And um, what was the song? She's, or You've Lost That Loving Feeling. Is that from like, the fifties or something like that. Like all these songs that are sung in real, according to the reality of the film, there's that song. And then there's great balls of fire. I'm like, this was the eighties. You're singing a song that was in the goddamn fifties. You know? I mean, that's like now they're singing so like, if you want to be my lover, you know, how often they're putting that song in, movies these days it's the equivalent of that i will say (laughs) i don't know man this 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 set off a chain of events in the movie that i thought was just very creepy and awkward this whole exchange and then when she gets up and he follows her into the bathroom 
I was just like, what movie am I watching? Tommy, don't be a creep. Yeah. This is the Tommy oh, I know and love. <laughs> yeah, very, very odd. And she's like, oh, you're persistent. Oh, you're aggressive and stuff like that. And the whole time, let, let me just say this. Cruz, he's got some okay acting parts in the movie, but until now, he's just like super smiley, like, oh, yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, it's fucking crazy. Uh, okay, but the next morning, dun, 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 th th that's not the correct uh, sounds. Um, turns out she's an instructor. She's a civilian um, astrophysicist. And uh, it's totally against the rules to date, uh, you know, whatever. But... Um, Actually, in, originally in the, the movie, um, she wasn't a civilian. She was just straight up working for them. But the Army or the Navy, they were like, you can't do that. We are totally against that. Make her a civilian contractor. So they're like, oh, all right. So they had to change that little part of it because uh, they're not supposed to be interacting and shit. And uh, so this is the part that again it just kind of like catches me by surprise I'm like this is really what the fucking movie's about he's like uh i flew uh, the something the mig upside down or i inverted it or something like that and all she cares about is she's like you saw a mig that's all she wants to talk about it is so bizarre because i'm like what's a mig can you just like for the common man civilian and say, like, please tell me what a MIG is. I know it's a plane, but say it's a plane. You know what I mean? I don't know. I was just kind of not having too much to feel <laughs> during this moment of the movie. I'm like, okay, she's the person in charge. And that made me go, say what? This is getting wild. And then it was like a bunch of boring techno babble about stuff I don't know. So I went. Glad I, glad I don't have to pretend to know anything about this subject. People will think I'm real dumb if I, <laughs> oh, if they only knew. So there's still stuff where I'm like, okay, so this is, this is the big movie. I kept on sitting there just like arms crossed. I'm like, when is this movie going to be like great and shit? So next we have f flying practice. And I'm like, it's just practice. I don't fucking give a shit. And then he uh, flies by the tower. Right, and the guy's like drinking coffee. He's like, oh, shit, like that. <laughs> yeah, I uh, immediately am starting to hate Maverick, the character, at this point because he's being a shithead, a cocksucker. He's going around <laughs> making women uncomfortable. He's <laughs> lying around making people spill coffee on their nice uniforms. <laughs> no, but for real, he is. What is he doing? He's a kid. He's still so young, and he's being given the opportunity to fly these aeroplanes and he's going to pull stunts and like that. Mm -mm, mm, not a fan. This kid would be being, he would be on a no fly list on, in my school. All right. <laughs> he would be suspended for three days. No meals. I don't know. No meals. Oh my gosh. He's wasting away. Uh, afterwards, that's when like he is, reprimanded but then afterwards the guy's like well you know still good flying technically I mean, it's just you're not supposed to leave your wingman and i'm like yeah that is totally correct you're not supposed to leave your person alone that's the whole point i thought and that's when of course that's when uh, uh iceman is like you know you're dangerous it's like Argh. he's like what's that Argh. bite him and shit um, what's next? Because all I have is the volleyball scene. Can we please talk about the volleyball scene, Scott? Oh, I wanted to actually mention uh, um, just Goose. Anthony Edwards, the guy who plays him. I feel that he is just really selling the friendship between him and Tom. Tom's yeah. kind of just being his certain way, but the only reason I even really care about him at all is because Goose likes him so much and they have this camaraderie together and they just seem very natural the chemistry is very nice and i just thought that goose was playing it very well he's uh you can see as to why he was on er for so long yeah 
I wish he would have been more goose like in ER because uh, like it was I watched ER, you know, like everybody did, I suppose. But, you know, when I think of ER, I don't think of that guy. I think of George Clooney or Girl with Crutches or uh, <laughs> Noah Wiley. You know Sorry. what I mean? Yeah, I've never seen ER. I don't know how he acts. Oh. <laughs> I will say there's a reason why people remember this movie and they remember Goose. Not just because he dies, because he's fucking cool. They want to hang out with Goose. They want to be his friend. They want to sing little Richie's rich songs with him on the piano. I want to sit on top of that piano and knock that little kid off. Get out of here. Let me hang out with Goose. Anyways, the uh, volleyball scene immediately hmm. makes me want to play volleyball. I just wanted to like tag me in. Maverick, get out of there. Let me play with Goose. I want to be on the <laughs> You wanted to play with the boys, right? I did. It was funny. Did you um, volleyball? I love volleyball, man. As you should. Yeah. But I would probably go, I would say like, no, stay in there, Maverick. Let me play with Iceman and we'll both take you down. Right, because you're yeah. a Valley, Valley Kiln, Kilms fan. <laughs> Valley Kiln, Yeah. <laughs> Sun Valley. All right. So this is weird, though. Okay. So there is a bit of dr drama in it because he keeps on, like, I this scene again has been parodied so many fucking times. But to see it play out, I'm like, I mean, I don't know. Uh, they're like, oh, it's fucking gay as shit. And, you know, I'm like, I don't know. Uh, I suppose. But Cruz is always like flexing and like looking at his watch. And I was always wondering why, because he actually finally has a date with uh, shoulder pads, right? So he's like, <laughs> yeah. Ugh, Ugh, what oh, time is it? Beach pads. <laughs> <laughs> and he keeps on looking because he's going to be late. So then he jumps on the, the, the motorcycle and then we get the Take My Breath Away song. The dun, 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 dun. Breath away. Um, I just love the fact that she's like, oh, I'm a teacher, come on over and we'll drink wine together. <laughs> what? <laughs> this is immediately inappropriate. Well, what, what was the point of that? Because he gets there and he's like, I need to shower. And right away I'm like, okay, you're, you're pushing your boundaries again, Cruz. And she says, no but we're going to drink together and we're going to, and, but then she's like, I want to just talk about the Meg. And he's like, well, I wanted to talk about my daddy or something like that. Like <laughs> my daddy, <laughs> my daddy. It was so weird. I was like, what is this? Okay. Uh, another thing that I, that stood out to me. So it's a great shot, right? When, before he gets there, after he leaves the volleyball scene, motorcycle, uh, the Unset thing, you know, it's again a repeat of that opening, the opening scene, right? And it's got the music, and he shows up, and so they have that whole scene where they're talking, and then they're outside during the daytime, and it's like bright white light, right? And as soon as that date is over with or whatever, he's like, I'm gonna go shower finally, you know? He gets on his motorcycle, it cuts to the exact same time of day back when it's like super evening and the sunset, the great shot. So I'm like, they shot him on that one thing, pulled over, got out of the motorcycle, hopped back on, and you know, filmed the rest of the scene. It was crazy. It was madness. <laughs> what uh. kind of movie are they doing over there? <laughs> <laughs> What are they doing up in those 80s? They thought, I wanted, they thought I wouldn't notice this 25 years later. I did. And I will not forgive. Uh, what do you have written after this? I just have Meg Ryan. I have, I guess we could talk about Meg Ryan real quick. Uh, she, it's so weird to see her in such a non-existent role to where she's just kind of like, a, oh, hey, this is Goose's lover. And they have yeah. this kid, and I really did enjoy seeing him hanging out, and because he just loved Goose so much, so you're like, oh, this is his gal. All right, pretty good looking chick for Goose, because Goose. I mean, okay, we we love Goose, right? But Goose is just like this tall, kind of goofy, mustachioed dude. But he's got Meg Ryan, and I'm 
not like a huge Meg Ryan fan by any goddamn means. I've always watched her and I'm like, what's her appeal? I don't get it. Like, why? You know, I never saw when Harry met Sally when she faked the orgasm, but I've seen faked orgasms. Can she <laughs> really top? You know, <laughs> um, uh, before we take a small break, Scott, I just want to say there's that scene. Is this the same scene where they're at the bar, right? No, we might have skipped some stuff. Well, there was a scene where uh, she, uh, uh, there was she's like a uh, shoulder pad. She was saying something to Maverick <laughs> about something that he didn't like, but she, they had like some simulation in their little school room. And then he did something that was like a bad boy thing to do, but it would have still worked. So afterwards she was like, yo, I had to tell you that you couldn't do that, but really, um, you know, that, that would have probably worked in real life. And then he was like, well, fuck you. <laughs> when she's trying to explain, he's just keeps walking. She's like Maverick or what's her name? What's his real name? Mitchell, something like that. You remember his real name? Ma a Maverick. Maverick. Whatever. But, but then he gets on his bike and she's still trying to talk. He's like, like every single time. <laughs> I'm like, what a fucking prick. I like, am I, oh, I was so annoyed. This is the yeah. guy we're rooting for. The one having the yeah. tantrum at the moment. <laughs> okay. And then that finally is when they sleep together or no, no, there's a little, it actually is drawn out, which I was really surprised by because I do remember, um, there has to be that scene in the elevator where she's wearing that hat like she's in fucking disguise. Yeah. Turns out that was a reshoot. And they were like, we need one more scene where they're not fucking. Before they fuck, they need one more scene. So that was a reshoot. So I'm guessing she probably already cut her hair after the movie. So they're just like, put this fucking hat on, you know? Right. It's crazy. In the moment, yeah. I don't let myself think about stuff like that too much in the moment. But looking back, makes total sense. I'll just kind of go with whatever. I try not to nitpick when I watch a movie, to be honest. Uh, I mean, obviously, no. there are things that catch my attention that I can't ignore, but I didn't notice it when it happened. I was like, oh, that was reshot? Hmm, okay, cool. Interesting. <laughs> You're like, I'll sleep at night. Meanwhile, I'm like tossing and turning. I'm like, ah, don't <laughs> forget to mention the hat scene. Don't forget to mention the hat scene of the podcast. No, let's talk about the sex. <laughs> <laughs> talk about the sex. All that tongue kissing and whatnot. Blah, 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 blah. Yeah. I apologize for that. That was... <laughs> right, but yeah, we can talk about the sex scene. They uh, fuck, and Tommy Cruise is all on top, and, and I don't uh, know what else to say about the sex scene, Vince. What else did you have in mind? Um, a lot of intense, passionate kissing. Right. Um, there's that. But I, I, I guess just in general, the chemistry between the two and the, um, the – let's just discuss the difference in height. Tom Cruise is about 5'7". Meanwhile, shoulder pads is like 6 foot. So in the documentary that I watched, they were like – and this was at the time, at 2000, at the year 2000. They're like, no, Tom Cruise didn't care that the leading lady was taller than him, but producers cared. So they were like, okay, take your shoes off for most of these scenes, lady. Slouch, you know? And she's like, whenever I watch that movie, she's like, my posture is terrible. <laughs> she's like, whenever I'm around him, I'm, I'm always leaning and shit like that. My know? first thought came to the elevator scene is when she was like leaning – <laughs> yeah. and if you notice um uh even when he's halfway naked in the locker room scenes because i definitely paid attention to those scenes uh val kilmer and all the other guys they're always just kind of leaning too you know just to kind of or, or like goose is just straight up sitting down and Cruz is kind of leaning over him lording over him you know what i mean it's so it's so weird I never so noticed with, that, and that's so funny that they can't just let a leading man be short. It's like, no, we got to yeah. make it up here to be a monster of a size. Everyone else is weirdly short. Yeah, but I also don't think it was just producers. I think that's Cruz's Tommy. thing, too. Yeah, because, yeah, like, he dated 
or he he married Nicole Kidman and she's tall as a house. And he's like, let's take out those kneecaps, hon. <laughs> yeah. <the> surgeon, please. <laughs> Yeah. Meanwhile, he's kind of eyeing up Katie Hill and was like, you look like you uh, stunted growth over there. That's hot. You're going to be okay? <laughs> Where did your mind go right then? <laughs> because he eventually leaves her or she leaves him and he goes for Katie Holmes. Yeah. Yeah, but okay. Anyway, moving along from that. Uh, no, the sex. <laughs> no, go back to it. So Tommy inserts We're gonna go. his tongue into the throat 13 times that I counted. What do you got, Ben? You counted that? No! <laughs> uh, uh, just, again, that's been parodied so many times, even with uh, Sonny, the Dennis System episode. Right? You're a fan, right? I'm a fan. There you go. You know, you know yeah, what man. I'm referring to? I do. It's a very funny episode. All right, let's get out. Let's pull out of the sex scene, Scott, and uh, towel off. All right, now, next I have the scene in the bar in where uh, they're playing the piano, right? Is that the next scene? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so this is uh, – there's kind of a few things to, to uh, bring up. One is the, you know, the great balls of fire. And I'm like, well, it's, it's like super what, old. But then song? again. What do you, what, what, what is with you in that song? Hey, it's a nice song. When I heard the song, I went, nah. and then you're over there going. Nah. <laughs> Sorry, I just. Uh, yeah. I, uh, <laughs> Sorry, Scott. We, uh, you have to admit that there's not everyone's going to like what you like, Scott. This podcast is over. No, <laughs> Click. That is just fine. I just want to go on record saying I think it's a fun song. Lovely song. But uh, you wanted to, what, smash the piano when you heard it? <laughs> yes. Uh, and then strangle uh, Meg Ryan with the chord, piano chord? I don't know. Uh, no, Meg Ryan has this great line. No, it's fucking weird. It's like, hey, uh, Goose, take me around back or... Lose me forever to Russell Crowe. Something like that. What? I have no idea what the hell you're talking about all of a sudden. What's the actual line? I'm assuming that she married know. Russell Crowe at some point. No, in, in, in reality, I'm yeah. just making a reference to she was married to Dennis Quaid, and then she cheated on him with Russell Crowe oh. in Proof of Life. Oh. Yes, yes. See, I'm trying to I'm trying to do multiple things here, but you stop it by like I don't get it. <sighs> well, I didn't know Explain if, you, it. if you you said there's this weird moment that she <laughs> says to Goose. I thought you were gonna say something. Were you intertwining an actual line with something that yeah. you were referencing? See, I don't. Yeah, know. Yeah, she says. Line, she says like, um, "Hey Goose, if you don't pick me up and take me to the and do me behind the woodshed." Or do that to me or lose me forever. That's what she said. Something like that. Okay. Gotcha. What a I'm weird fucking line. Yeah. Yeah. I'd rather see her fake an orgasm than say that fucking line. It's such a, it's such a mouthful. I really like the yeah. scene. Because in the moment, I'm like, oh, man, you never really see just wholesome couples like this. You can tell they're really in love. They got the kit. And I was like, oh, right. The death scene's coming up, though. So that's the only reason this stuff exists. Is so they can pull on your heartstrings mm, and use yes. inevitably hits his noggin. There's a there's a hold on before we before anyone hits any noggins. There like it concludes where Tom Cruise kind of dances up to the piano and there's a little kid on the piano, and they're singing and Tom Cruise is trying to get the kid to like interact with him to have like a good scene, but the kid's just a kid, you know, and he's barely an actor, so he's just kind of looking at Tom Cruise like bewildered and stuff like. That kid never worked again because yeah. of Tommy's power. Yeah. He's like, I, I don't know what you're doing there, Tom Cruise. If you're not jumping on couches. that That's a reference to um, the scene uh, that happened in uh, the show of Oprah, Scott. Yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm trying I to get it, okay? I know what you're doing. <laughs> you know what? I, 
The kid actually also did start singing along. Uh, okay, let's get to the death scene, Scott. And the death scene is occurring, and we're feeling, and we're wondering what's coming, and suddenly, something's happening. What's happening with the planes? Val Kilmer and Cruz are in the air, and oh no, Cruz is losing control. Here we are. But why, but why though? I I there's a few this was things a, going out there, yeah. That, right. <laughs> uh, one is the where it's Val Kilmer's fault because he came in too close to Cruz or something like that, and then Cruz got stuck in some type of ice tunnel. Uh, I I should have written some of that stuff down, but there were a few things to where it was Cruz's fault or Val Kilmer's fault or no one's actual fault. What do you think? Yeah, it was it was called it was called jet wash, Scott. Um, but. What happens and why it happens was so inconsistent to what's been established. Iceman is called Iceman is because he's steady. He doesn't go wild. He doesn't go crazy. He's just fucking cool as ice. He doesn't get rattled. And what was happening, and because that's what, how Goose describes him, she's like, if you step out of line once, that's when he takes advantage and he just keeps winning, right? So this whole thing starts off where the this is practice. They're both Ice and Maverick have to uh, tail this plane and get shots or whatever. Just make sure that it remains on target for a number of minutes, and that's per points or something like that, right? And Maverick was behind Ice. He's like, "Hey, dude, it's our turn to tail the jet." Totally lame, right? But Ice is like, oh, I want some more time. I'm just stacking points, homie. And finally, he's like, okay, I'm, I'm out of here. But Maverick, while he was tailing Ice Iceman the whole time, then he gets into the uh, jet wash, whatever that is, and that kills both engines. And that's when they both start to just, uh, uh, Maverick and Goose, just to tailspin or whatever, right? Right. And... Right away, I'm like, okay, well, eject. You know, they didn't use this in the beginning. Now is the time to use it. And there's some thing they're yelling. They're like, I can't reach it. You know, they pull it, and it's just a it it just malfunctions. Yeah, it seemed as if the top didn't open up as quickly as it was supposed to. So they pulled it, and it's supposed to be like a one quick motion. <laughs> But instead, it was like a. Yeah. And it was so the whole thing was like, this is so contrived. Like, nothing makes any sense. It just, this is happenstance, or Iceman's flying out of character. Maverick shouldn't be right behind Iceman like that. Like, all this stuff combines into just this weird thing. But. It doesn't matter because now we're like, oh, Goose, no, because he hits his head and he's fucking dead, you know? It's just, it's so weird. Again, it's like, this is practice, so they had to make it seem dangerous eventually. And to take away Goose is to take away the one goddamn thing that makes Tom Cruise tolerable in this movie, you know? Right. It was just such a unnecessary... <laughs> they tried to make something to where... He would die, but everything in place was not a logist like a logical reason for that death to happen. It was just like, oh, this is happening because movie's got a movie and Goose has got to die. <laughs> movie's got a movie, buddy. Yeah, and it was the '80s, man. They were snorting lines. So like, what if, <laughs> what if Goose fucking dies, man? And they're like, woo. But why? And they're like, how about you could just imagine how the sketch plays out? They're just fucking coked up, which is another real. I I, I love throwing these. Uh, We're gonna get so many people notes. to join the navy. <laughs> 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 but there was there was uh, it wasn't just produced by Jerry Bruckheimer. It was produced by some other guy. I don't remember his name, but he's dead now from a fucking heart attack from prolonged cocaine and alcohol use and hooker use. He had like hookers in the studio and he would show up with like a, uh, with fucking cocaine on his nose and he would just like come into the board, 
uh, to the meetings is like, I'm going to rewrite the scene right now. You know what I mean? Like, this is a true product of the fucking cocaine 80s thing. It's nuts. So maybe he wrote this particular scene. I don't know. <laughs> maybe. Maybe. What the hell? <laughs> All right. Uh, okay, so you mentioned off camera. You were like, um, don't ever fucking upstage me again, Vince. I'm like, oh, shit. All right. <laughs> okay. I'll try my best. Uh, no, you were just like, as soon as Goose dies, it's just kind of, it just, it's just a slope down to the ending. You know what I mean? Because yeah, it's it all just like, like. trickles down and it's like, oh, nothing really happens. Nothing really matters. It's just like, there's some cool moments where tom cruise gets to act and act and get, he's sad and there's uh you get to see some feelings you get to see some feelings in the movie which is nice but then it's just kind of like oh yeah and well he doesn't want to fly anymore so i guess the movie's over no well we got to still show that val kilmer won because he's ice man he was going to win anyway okay <laughs> there's a there's a few details that you left out, right? Number one, he, Tom Cruise, never loses his cool on anyone in this movie except one person. And that was the dude from um, Walker, Texas Ranger and Die Hard, uh, the black guy. Um, I don't know what his name was. Oh, yeah, yeah, okay. Afterwards, after they got out of the plane. Because he was yeah. like, why, you had so many shots. Why didn't you do the shots? You could have shot. You, why didn't you shoot? <laughs> Tommy's like, hey, mister. <sighs> yeah, you're right. He, he doesn't lose He doesn't lose his shit against Iceman, the one guy who's constantly prodding him. Big, strong Tom Cruise yells at the black guy. Like, fuck you, man. I'm sorry, Scott. Let's uh, let's get back on track. <laughs> and then the the other thing that you skipped was um oh shit, where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Oh, he I, talks to yeah. I was just gonna what? say I really did enjoy the scene where Val Kilmer was like, "Hey, uh, sorry about Goose." I'm <laughs> uh, the actual moment itself, I thought, was portrayed really genuinely by Val Kilmer as someone like as if as if someone really didn't like someone, and then something bad happened to them, they could at least try to show their condolences. And I just thought that he did a very swell job of doing just that. Yeah. Again. And he doesn't have a lot of scenes, like really, like so few scenes. So what he's given to do, like he does them just fine. Like that apology. Yeah, it was a nice little scene. I was, I was expecting, again, after Tom snapped at, what's his name? I think his name's like Moonshine or Moonflyer or something like that. I don't know, Midnight or something like that. He snaps at him and I, and I was like, oh, Valakil, this is not the time to talk to him, you know? But it plays out kind of realistically, not like a movie. You know what I mean? I think yeah. crew snapping on the dude, that was very movie like, but this wasn't, you know? And, and there is a small scene where in the courtroom, they're like, we find Maverick not guilty of whatever, you know, which is good, but it doesn't make him feel any better. You know, he's extremely, he's guilt ridden. You know? I did like how the instructors were like, this happened. We need to get him into the sky ASAP or he's never going to be able to do it again. So it was like uh, they understood what was happening. And if they wanted to salvage this great pilot that they know that he is, they needed him to get out there as soon as possible. But it's just the interest was completely gone from Maverick at this point. So I thought that was just kind of a nice touch that they added to the movie. Yeah, and then he goes, <clears throat> he has a scene with uh, Tom Skerritt. I think his name is Viper in this movie. And uh, he's like, well, I might get uh, 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 fucking something. Something's going to happen in the military. I might get thrown out for saying this because this is classified material. He's like, but your father, I flew with your father. And even though on the record, it's the official record, they were like, he was reckless and he fucked up and he died. 
But he's like, but don't listen to all that stuff, Mr. Cruz. Your father was actually a hero. So go out there and be a hero like your dad. But he totally could have made that shit up. You know what I mean? Like he totally could have. Because it was official. They were like, his dad was reckless. And he fucking died, you know? And again, he could have just been saying that because he saw the potential in Maverick himself. So that's a great thought. You know, you never really know with the backstory. Yeah. Um, so after that, what, what, what happened? Oh, I think um, Shoulder Press tries to approach him. But no, she's like, oh, I got accepted at like another place, right? She's like, I got a job somewhere. You remember I that? I don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yes. I'm never, I remember I'm never that part. So you, alone. Were, you were totally correct. That's exactly what happened. She came over, shoulder pads and all. <laughs> she got a new jobby. Said, why don't we go do this together as a couple? No, she didn't say that. She was yeah, like, no, she didn't because I don't remember that. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> it. Okay, well, this was this was after Goose died, and I think we're all just like, you know, like, whoa, what the fuck do we do? What's the point of this fucking movie anymore? You know what I mean? And so, because he's like at the bar, and he's like, he's got a bottle of beer. He's like, oh god. And she's like, hey, I got that job. And I'm going to it, but I just want you to know that you're a damn good pilot and stuff. He's like, all right. You know, Whatever, just, Toots. Get to step yeah, in. Yeah, you fucking dizzy dame. <laughs> what do you know, you broad? <laughs> <laughs> all right, so what's next? I think we get to the – no, no. We got to get to the fucking the, – the, the titular oh my event. Gosh. So boring. He went, okay, yeah. It's and it's so uneventful, right? They're just, they just cut to him and he's like, here you go. Iceman is like, oh you know, he's not even like, yeah, fuck you, Maverick. <laughs> like there's nothing going on in this scene at all, you know? Cruz shows up, he didn't graduate, he didn't get the fucking trophy. Val Kilmer probably rightfully won, right? Because every single time they're like, Maverick, you can't leave. You have to be a wingman. You can't be leaving to go do some crazy stunt. And it's true. This is so fucking weird. But Michael Ironside is like, congratulations, guys. But uh, um, the planet is being overrun by giant bugs, and we got to shoot them Starship, Starship Trooper style. <laughs> yeah. So they're being called back to actual combat to where – that's where Maverick started on that fucking ship. It's, uh, it's so fucking bizarre. I don't get it. So let's talk about that ending, Scott. You take take it away, Scott. Well, I was dozing off at this part because <laughs> boring. Yeah, I lost. It. I was already like I had my sunglasses on, sulking <laughs> in my chair because Goose was already gone. What's even the point of living in? What's even the point of watching at this point? Yeah. G O O S E. Wish you were here with me. <laughs> but uh, no, I, I honestly couldn't tell you what happened in this ending with the flying and the nonsense because I was already zoned out. Everything already happened. And I'm like, oh, now they're flying some planes again. Okay. I couldn't be less interested. Yeah. There was a moment where. Maverick, they were like, Maverick, get into combat. And he's like, I don't know. I don't know. I got the sky madness, you know? But he fucking gets out of it and he goes to help Iceman, which is his job. Like, it's it's so bizarre. It's, why why is he the hero? Why isn't Iceman the hero? I don't know. It this This movie doesn't make any sense. It just was put together by people that were like, we want to make a mega hit. We're all on cocaine. You know what I mean? Like, we're this is just going to work. We're going to make this work, even if it doesn't make any sense, you know? And I'm not interested in this fucking fight either, even though now it's real. Like, people are actually getting blown up and stuff. But it's just like, it's like too little too late, perhaps? I was thinking the same thing, just kind of too little too late. Well, um, so it ends... Uh, 
they land. It's like the ending of Star Wars A New Hope where they're like, ah, oh my God. Everyone's like super excited and they're all hugging and shit. And Tim Robbins shows up out of nowhere. <laughs> like, Tim Robbins, oh my God, where have you been? He's like, I've been crawling through a river of shit. The Shawshank Redemption. I just feel like I have to explain every fucking <laughs> reference now, Scott. <laughs> I find a lot of humor in that, so thank you. <laughs> but uh, I, I like Tommy Cruise. I'm excited. I keep up with what he's working on next, and I'm just so mad that I'm sitting here waiting for his next movie, and it's supposed to be this friggin' sequel to this movie. And now it's pushed back, and now I gotta wait even longer to see my boy Tommy do his thing, and then just gonna be in this damn movie, Top Gun Maverick. Fuck. Yeah, that's. I think it could have had a better sequel name, but they're just like Maverick, because you know who Maverick is, because everyone's sort of seen this movie through osmosis, like I said. There's one scene, though, which I, I thought was confusing. Afterwards, he's on the ship. And he's looking out at the scene. He's got Goose's dog tags. And the typical scene where, like, the character throws something just to be like, I'm, I've moved on. But I'm like, those are Goose's dog tags. Why don't you give it to Meg Ryan? <laughs> you know, she's probably like, I wish I had something of Goose's to remember <laughs> him. Never, sorry, honey, daughter. We could never find his dog tags. We never knew what happened to him or else I'd give them to you and you could carry on your father. No. Apparently, they're just missing because Tommy Cruise wanted to have a moment. Yeah. And thank you for polluting Mother Earth, you piece of <laughs> shit. God damn it. Uh, um, okay. And then, so at the, this is like, well, fucking, we got like two minutes left. And uh, Cruise is like, I don't want to do this. I want to teach. Uh, yeah. And I was like, what the fuck? What is this movie? What the fuck? Like, he's the reckless guy who they're like, you could be a great pilot. But he himself is like, no, I'm better at teaching instead of doing this. You have shown us in no way that you would be a patient person when it comes to helping others at all in this movie. In fact, you've been a reckless son of a gun who gets people killed. Oh, yeah, you want to teach. Oh, give me some chalk, please. <laughs> yeah, chalk. And he goes to a bar and he puts on, you lost that loving feeling. and Or no, she does it, right? Because he hears the song or song. Yeah, he's like, what the fuck? And then she shows up. He's like, hey, fly boy, why don't you take off these shoulder pads and <laughs> jump on my shoulders, make you feel tall for once. Yeah. <laughs> and that's the end of the movie. Again, it, it was just like this huge phenomenon. And maybe, maybe I'm too far removed. Maybe I, I view the 80s stuff as like, that's just silly 80s stuff. Because we, you know? we had already... We, we went into this movie with such a weird mentality because we knew exactly what the movie was. We'd seen it multiple times through parodies and countless other things. And then, so we didn't get to experience this movie like they got to experience it back then. And even just people growing up, I feel like if we would have seen it when we were younger, we, we would have, might have appreciated it more. I don't necessarily think so, actually, but maybe. <laughs> you know, we'll never know. Uh, I had already seen Hot Shots a hundred times, though. So oh, yeah. indeed, this movie is just silly. I wanted when I when I knew Goose was gonna die. I wanted him to die, just like in Hot Shots, where like the the wife is like seeing it, so he like makes her turn around, and, <laughs> and he, she just sees him like crash or whatever, because it like passes Isn't over he, them, then turns around. Didn't he like fall? get up have like ant like twigs on his head to where he looked like a deer and he was running around and he got shot and then the family put his head on the wall <laughs> I don't, wow there's I, I just know i know that movie a lot but i don't remember everything that's crazy that's hilarious yeah Ugh. just watching this movie made me wish i was just watching hot shots to be honest <laughs> yeah charlie sheen uh 
say what you will, but he's more watchable than Cruz to me, anyways. I, Cruz only has that oh. one move, just super cockiness. Ah. No. <laughs> <laughs> right, like Cruz. <laughs> yeah. uh, okay, well, that's that's the end of the movie, Scott. What uh, what else is there to say, really? It's a uh, you know. I mean, I I liked it more than I thought I was going to. So hmm. I did enjoy it for the most part. Am I ever going to watch it again? No. no. Am I going to watch Top Gun too? Oh, I don't want to, but I got to get my Tommy Cruise fixed. So might just have to eat the bite the bullet. Eat bite the bullet. Yeah. If you if you really need your fix, just watch all his scenes in Tropic Thunder. That's about the only good. Like, oh, okay. Again, you like Tom Cruise. Okay. I'm not gonna, I'm gonna, okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, in the trailer, they're like, hey. uh, I don't even remember the trailer. It's just, it's just, it seems to be almost the same thing. Although, what's her name? Shoulder pads isn't around anymore. Neither is Iceman. It's just Maverick, right? I don't know. I, I don't think I've even seen the preview for the next movie. The action looks better. That's about it. Because now they could have better shots and stuff. That looks really cool. But then it suffers from the same sequel I just shit where they're like, I think the trailer ends with him rolling past the tower and having the guy like spill even more coffee on him. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> this is a Keurig. Oh my God. You know, like it is, it, it was like, ugh, we already seen it. So is this just going to be this, uh, like a rehash, you know, like crazy. I don't know. I don't know. That was the movie. Yeah. I'm glad it's over. <laughs> <laughs> and <laughs> next time I hope that we can, watch a movie that we maybe sort of somewhat enjoy. More well, so I like the fact that neither of us seen it before. So we should think of other movies that we haven't like, you know, so I, I, it's hard to think of something right now where I'm like, have you seen this? Well, I haven't, you know, throw out a, throw out a movie out there. Maybe the audience could be like, Hey, we like your shit. This is a movie you should watch. If you, both of you have never seen it. The chances of them yelling off some movie that we haven't seen before. It would have to be pretty obscure at this point. Cause there are, yeah. I don't know. Then again, that's what I do. We'll, 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 we'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so this was, uh, the mind reels, by the way, I, I forgot what this was. The mind reels. And with Vincent cloud and Scott Allwood. <laughs> Bye.